The new era at Idaho State University is now a year old. Former Boise State University Chief Operating Officer and Vice President Kevin Satterley begins his second year as president of ISU. The university faces challenges, including a drop in enrollment and resulting financial struggles, but also opportunities. As Idaho's leader in health science education, it's helping to meet the state's growing need for health care providers. Today, the challenges and opportunities, the academics and athletics, and what's happening on the campuses in Pocatello and Meridian. Idaho State University President Kevin Satterley on the accomplishments of year one and the priorities for year two, ahead on Viewpoint. From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. Welcome to Viewpoint, I'm Doug Petcash. Idaho State University was founded in Pocatello back in 1901 as the Academy of Idaho. It now offers education in more than 250 programs at its main campus and its locations in Meridian, Twin Falls, and Idaho Falls. ISU has about 12,000 students. Kevin Satterley became Idaho State's 13th president in June of 2018 after spending 17 years at Boise State, most recently as Chief Operating Officer, Vice President, and Special Counsel to the President of Boise State. He is beginning his second year in office, and he is my guest today to talk about the challenges and opportunities at Idaho State and in higher education. President Satterley, thank you for being here today. Appreciate it. And thanks for having me, Doug. I'm happy to be here. Okay, so you graduated from Boise State undergrad. Right. You got your law degree from the University of Idaho. Right. Then you worked for Boise State. Now you're the president of Idaho State. So it sounds like you've got your bases pretty well <laughs> covered when it comes to Idaho universities. Well, I, I do like to say I'm a lifelong Idahoan. In fact, I'm a fourth generation native of the state. And so for me, uh, having experience at multiple uh, institutions of higher education in Idaho, I think is good for the perspective that I bring, which is it's about creating a better education opportunity for all Idahoans. So why did you want to be president of Idaho State? Well, the main reason was because I saw the potential at Idaho State University. I saw the things that Idaho State University could do. And, and when I took this position a year ago this month, I saw a lot of that unrealized potential. Mm -hmm. And I knew that when that potential became unleashed, it was going to be very good for the state of Idaho and good for the students of Idaho State University because there are so many great things going on at Idaho State mm -hmm. and that's why I wanted to, to help with that position. When you say potential, was there something in particular in terms of potential that you saw? Well, Idaho State University has so many great things going for it. Uh, but one of the things is it remained uh, a little bit of Idaho's best kept secret in higher education. So take for example, um, as your intro noted, the, our mission as statewide leader in the health sciences. What that really translates into is Idaho State University offers 75% of all of the healthcare degrees issued in the state of Idaho, and they come from Idaho State University. Well, that's important for all Idaho citizens and for all of our prospective students to know, to know that that choice is available, to know that an option is available for them so that they have an opportunity to better their lives through higher education. And that's the kind of thing that is going on at Idaho State that we need to make sure everybody knows about. And so how is it going after one year? Yeah, it's going fantastic. There are so many things going on. We, we have, I think, in the first year, um, undergone a definite effort to rest restore our roar, right? Mm -hmm. Restoring the roar is a big part of what we're doing because it is about reaching out to those students, those students in rural Idaho and in urban Idaho to let them know that Idaho State University does have those options for them about the healthcare professions, about being one of only six accredited um, universities in the West with a nuclear engineering program, and that that program has a unique um, combination of four licenses from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission that allows us to do things that many other universities can't do. For example, uh, we produce the isotope Copper 67 on our campus, and that isotope is used in the fight against cancer and cancer research around the world. And we produce it on our nuclear uh, particle accelerator that's located on our campus. And those are the kind of things that are so exciting to go and be a part of at the university. So these are things that are going on that I'll be totally honest about. I didn't create them. Mm -hmm. They're not about me. They've been going on there for a long time. But now we are getting that word out and students and people in the state of Idaho are understanding that that's uh, the kind of opportunities they can have with Idaho State University. Sticking on the same basic theme, um, the Idaho Education News reported that 
the 2017-2018 student enrollment dipped by about 400 students mm -hmm. compared to the year before, um, and that impacted your budget. Uh, what is the status of the enrollment situation right now, and how big of an impact did that reported dip have? So our enrollment trends for the last several years have been down and so we have to work on that and I'm less worried about the impact on our budget than about the fact that there are many Idahoans out there who would be well served to better their lives through education that need to come to Idaho State and to our sister schools throughout the state of Idaho. So for me it's about the reason we have to change the rate of our enrollment is so that more students have access to higher education in Idaho. So we have a couple of good news uh, pieces in that trend. Our um, new incoming freshmen, those numbers are trending in the right direction. Our number of Idaho residents who are coming to us is trending in the right direction. But overall, we have to undertake uh, a serious effort to both increase our enrollment and our retention rates to make sure that students are coming to Idaho State that's and nice. finishing towards their degree so that they can get the education they need. So that's a major initiative we're working on. We have um, a student retention and success program task force that we're putting together right now to analyze uh, why we are losing some of the students and they're not coming and try and turn that trend in a positive direction. Um, I noticed that there were uh, a pretty heavy uh, cycle of, of commercial airings um, about mm -hmm. Idaho State University in this part of the state, particularly going towards the end of the public school year. Right. Um, is that part of that focus to stabilize the enrollment situation and attract more people from this side of the state? Yes. The, the, the brand uh, and marketing initiative that we're undertaking at its core, it's about letting students in Idaho, prospective students, know what options they have at Idaho State University. So knowing that we have the health science mission, so if they're looking for a health science degree, they would know what we have available. Knowing about our nuclear engineering program, our other engineering programs, or the fact that we have the number four ranked psychology program in the entire nation. The reason we talk about those things is so that students can go on. They know that they have that choice and that option available. What it's not, and this is almost as important, what it's not is about competing with our sister institutions in the state. There are plenty of students in Idaho for all of us. The key is getting them to go on. And they won't go on unless they know what, they, what we have to offer in Idaho higher education. So for that kid who's coming to us from Malad or Castleford <coughs> or here in Meridian or all the way up in Clark Fork, they need to know that they have an option at Idaho State University and what that means for them. But at the same time, I hope they know that they have options at Boise State and at the University of Idaho and Lewis Clark State College mm -hmm. and at our four community colleges. Right. Because if a student wants a degree or an experience on one of those campuses, that's where they should go. I want them to go there. Mm -hmm. But for that student, that Idaho State University is the right option for them. We need to make sure we reach out to them because otherwise that student out there in Arco, if they don't know what's available, they won't come. And Idaho's go on rate has to improve. Mm -hmm. So we started a brand image campaign around our roar to talk about what will that student experience be like for you? And what is it like for our students and our alumni so that they can come and experience that? And that campaign is about letting people know what that is. And then it also has the effect of it's rallying our constituents, our base, mm -hmm. our supporters. Because feeling pride in what we do, pride around our roar, is the type of thing that helps people become engaged with the university. It helps with our fundraising. It helps with our research to connect business and industry to what we're doing at the university for research purposes. Mm -hmm. So in all that campaign was designed to um, open the awareness so that more students could have access to Idaho State. I, I want to ask you about the research in just a sure. minute, but first, um, you know, every year we see uh, tuition and fee increases. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see as the biggest challenge facing Idaho State or higher education in general in Idaho? Is it the rising costs or, or do you see something else? Well, it's a combination probably. The rising cost is one of the problems. We have a model that isn't really sustainable to keep pushing more of the costs towards students. But it's important to understand that's not uh, an Idaho problem, it's a national problem. Um, but to talk about that, to talk about the cost of tuition, you have to go to the basics, which is in Idaho, as in most states, but in Idaho in particular, I, our public universities only get funding from two sources. There are some ancillary sources like um, 
fundraising or mm -hmm. parking revenue or tickets to events, but ultimately there's only two sources, money from the legislature and money from tuition. So the legislature appropriates this money or we charge the students and that's it. Mm -hmm. The overwhelming majority of the funding of Idaho's higher education is those two sources. And if you go back in time 30 years ago, um, the state of Idaho would appropriate 15% of the state budget went to higher education. So if it took all the money the legislature appropriates, 15% went to higher ed. Going into next fiscal year for 2020, the state appropriated about 8% of its budget into higher education. That's a 30-year trend. And now, at the same time, there's a direct correlation to how much student <coughs> fees have raised to make up that difference. And student fees now pay about half of the total cost of Idaho higher education. Now, that's not a criticism of the legislature, by the way. In fact, I think the legislature does well with the money and resources it has. And in Idaho, oh, higher education is treated much better than many other states. Hmm. So we actually have it pretty good here. So the legislature just has so many demands on its money. Uh, cities want more money. Counties want money. All agencies want. So the legislature is doing the best it can with the resources. But we are an unsustainable model to keep shifting that to the students. So the real question is, all right, Kevin, so what are you doing at Idaho State? Well, first, trying to send the message that we only raise student fees when it's necessary, and then when we do, only in the smallest amount necessary. And then we've adopted things like a tuition lock program. We're the only university in the entire state that has a tuition lock program. And that is, if you start as a freshman and you stay on track towards your degree program the entire four years, you'll pay the same tuition as your first semester. It will never go up. Okay. And we are doing fundraising campaigns for scholarships to try to scholarship our students. And we also have the lowest public university tuition in the state. So we have the lowest tuition of all the public universities, a tuition lock program, and we're trying to adopt a fundraising and uh, a philosophy that we're trying to keep those fees low. So we are trying to address that. Let's pause the conversation right there and continue after a short break. And the uh, Idaho State Campus in Meridian sits just off the interstate. It's right by Idaho's new medical school. Next, we'll look at what students are learning there and the role it's playing in creating the next generation of healthcare providers. And later, we'll talk sports. Stay tuned. Affordable? Yeah, we got that. Stylish? Got that covered too. Quality? You can bet on it. At Furniture Row, we take pride in furniture that's value-priced, built to last, and makes your home look amazing. And during the final days of the epic summer sale, check out the Fulton Sofa, only $3.99. The Cristo Bed, just $2.99. And over 30 mattresses, $3.99 and under. Plus, three years no interest. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices guaranteed. Hurry, the epic summer sale at Furniture Row ends soon. This town is on the move. And we're moving forward with you. Cable One is now Sparklight, meeting your ever-growing needs with ever-faster internet. Get up to 100 megs of internet for only $45 a month for 12 months. Get free installation and add unlimited data. Call 855-808-2737 for this limited time offer. Or visit sparklight.com to get connected. You know, it's the summer when it's time for Meridian Dairy Days, and a highlight, of course, is the Real Dairy Parade, Idaho's largest, celebrating 90 years of fun. It starts at 6 p.m. on June 22nd at Meridian Speedway and goes through downtown Meridian. And after the parade, you can check out the carnival, monster truck rides, and so much more at Story Park. We got a whole lineup coming up for you at Dairy Days. To post your local event, visit the Idaho Events Calendar at ktvb.com. And welcome back to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. My guest today is Idaho State University President Kevin Satterley. Uh, President Satterley, first of all, for people who don't know, what is the focus of education on the Meridian campus of Idaho State? So in Meridian, we have our Skaggs Health Science Center. And so the programming that we provide here in the Treasure Valley is all 
um, health education based. So we offer programs everywhere from undergraduate nursing, accelerated nursing and nursing completion programs, all the way through doctorate degrees in audiology, speech language pathology, physical therapy, occupational therapy. So it's all a health science based campus that we have here in Meridian. Are you finding more interest in those fields um, mm -hmm. as Idaho's population grows and mm -hmm. as the news gets out of how badly needed some positions in healthcare are here? Oh, absolutely. Idaho ranks one of the lowest states per capita of healthcare providers. Mm -hmm. And all of our programs here in Meridian are in high demand. And because they're medical fields, they have strict limits from an accreditation of how many students you can train at any one time. And our programs here are always in high demand. So what are your priorities for that campus then going forward? Expansion. I really? mean, just in a word, it's expansion. So this year we've invested in that campus in a major way. We have bought two parcels of property that adjoin that campus so that when added together, it's going to give us 28 acres of expansion room for the future of that campus because, you know. Do you know what you're going to put on there yet or is it just making the room for the future? It's making room for the future because we are about to undergo a master plan process to decide how to build that out. Okay. But, you know, healthcare, one of the largest sectors of the uh, national economy and the Idaho economy, it's growing. So the demand for health care in Idaho in general, especially in the Treasure Valley, is high. Um, I'm going to turn to sports uh, and talk about sure. that for a little bit. Um, last November, uh, a now former player accused head football coach Rob Fennessy of bruising his shoulder by, um, mm -hmm. through his shoulder pads, by doing, you know, kind of a hammer uh, punch, as it was described, during a halftime of a game. The, the university investigated, police investigated, the San Luis Obispo prosecutor's office even investigated, decided not to file any charges. The university decided not to follow up with any um, disciplinary action against Coach Fennessy. That was in November. It mm -hmm. was all cleared up in February. So now going forward, what is the big takeaway from a situation there that, that you can take from that going forward? Sure. Well, the first takeaway is our response to a situation like that. When we get an allegation like that, we will not hide from those run from those, we will deal with those. And we do that by doing a full, complete investigation and making sure that the athletic department doesn't investigate itself. We always will have someone from the outside looking into those to make sure there's no um, concern or appearance of bias. So we did a full and complete investigation and the completion of that investigation said that no action was warranted. Mm -hmm. and between all of the relevant law enforcement agencies and our own investigation saying there wasn't action warranted, we didn't take any personal action. That doesn't mean that we haven't learned from uh, things like this. And what we learn from these is we have to make sure that we have the type of program with quality and integrity that we know we're doing the right thing. And I think we are. And I think our, we have a great head coach. We have a new athletic director who has a commitment to excellence. And I really think as we go forward, we're going to be a better program because the message has been clear that we will take a look at what we're doing and investigate ourselves. So that puts um, a responsibility on us to make sure we're doing things the right way. And I know that one of your big things in your, uh, when you were first named was about transparency. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be is. a focus. It is. And transparency in what we do, in all of what we do. And in athletics, that's only one piece of it. Sure. We are a public university, and the public needs to know that we are doing things in a transparent, open manner uh, and um, using our public resources the best we can. So uh, that being said, the football team had a pretty good year last year, five and three in the mm -hmm. big sky, six and five overall. So what are your hopes and expectations for year three under Rob Fennessy going forward? Well, uh, very exciting. In fact, I, when I talked to the coach, he was very excited to go into spring camp and be bringing the third year of his philosophy and his offense and defense philosophy to those group of student athletes. And the more you have that, the, the, the better that becomes deeply embedded in the program. Mm -hmm. We have a commitment to excellence in our athletic program, and Coach Fantasy is a good example of that. We have a new athletic director who has that commitment. We've hired a new women's soccer coach, a new volleyball coach, a new men's basketball coach to add to our existing coaches, all who are coming in with a new commitment to excellence that doesn't matter the size of your budget and your market. You can have an ath excellent athletic program, and that's the quality program that we want at Idaho State. So what I'm hearing then is you're saying the football team is going to be 11-0 and 0 this year. <laughs> well, that's our goal starting the year. 
Uh, I have I have high hopes in uh, in Coach Fantasy. He's going to do a great job. The basketball team, the men's basketball team, has struggled um, over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, a new coach is coming in, Ryan Looney. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your hopes and expectations for him? Well, uh, I also have high expectations because I've talked to him. Um, I've looked him in the eye, and I can see his passion for what he wants to do with our basketball program. But like any new coach and any new coaching staff, they need time to instill their program into the department. Mm -hmm. But I have high expectations. Um, I've seen what he has done at his prior programs and his philosophy. I think we're going to see good things out of that program. And also Pauline Theros Mm -hmm. um, as the new athletic director named as the Rip, uh, as the new athletic directors in February or March, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and why was she the right person for the job? She was the right person because she brings a passion for that commitment to excellence. She's very committed to that. She's also a Pocatello native, an Idaho State University graduate, and is in our athletic hall of fame, hall of fame from when she played volleyball at Idaho State. Okay. She has passion for the university, passion for our students, passion for that. She's program. embedded. She is embedded in that program. Yeah. Um, you spent a lot of years at Boise State. Mm-hmm. You know how important athletics are to Boise State University. In general, how important do you think athletics are to the identity of a university? It's very important. Athletics is the window to the university that many people first experience a university. I can't tell you how many times a person has said to me, you know, first time I ever came to a university, I was a kid. I was a child and brought to arena, a, right, yeah. and brought to a football game or to a women's basketball game, and that's their first experience. And for many members of the community, this is how they interrelate with the university. An athletic program is very critical to that, and so it also is sometimes how you are known as a university. And so making sure you have a quality program one that is known for doing the right thing for its student athletes and understanding we need to help mentor them to become the people our society wants them to be for the rest of their life, not just for the four or five years they're performing their sport on campus. And when you have that commitment to that quality and that mission, that mission about quality student athletes and a quality program, the wins will come. Mm -hmm. It's that commitment to quality and excellence that's gonna make the difference. All right, I'm gonna call a timeout right there on the sports (laughs) talk. We'll be right back to wrap up our conversation with Idaho State University President Kevin Satterley right after this. Affordable? Yeah, we got that. Stylish? Got that covered too. Quality? You can bet on it. At Furniture Row, we take pride in furniture that's value priced, built to last, and makes your home look amazing. And during the final days of the epic summer sale, check out the Fulton Sofa, only $3.99, the Cristo Bed, just $2.99, and over 30 mattresses, $3.99 and under, plus three years no interest. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices guaranteed. Hurry, the epic summer sale at Furniture Row ends soon. Your new home is waiting at Revel, a refined senior community a welcoming place that supports your well-being, fosters genuine connections, and embraces your independence. See the difference in stylish apartment homes, best-in-class wellness services and amenities, and dining experiences by celebrity chef Bo McMillan. Experience living perfected at Revel. Russian phrases, hello, goodbye, and there's no collusion. (laughs) Next new Ellen, the talented kids of season 16. What kind of instrument do you want to learn how to play next? Guitar and the bass. Guitar and the bass. Does she like a xylophone? (laughs) No. Does she want to look at one? Weekdays at 2 on Idaho's News Channel 7. 
And we have just a couple of minutes left with Idaho State University President Kevin Satterley. President Satterley, I guess how important is it for uh, a university, Idaho State University, to be a research university? The research uh, function of the university is critical because it's what creates the connection between what we do as a university and business and industry, where we are creating new knowledge, doing research on things that help our society and our technology and um, in uh, our connection to make sure that what we're doing is relevant to business and industry. So research becomes a critical component of making sure that the university is connected to what we do as a state. What's gonna be the big focus for year two for you? Uh, for year two, I think we're gonna focus on retention at the student level and making sure that we are attracting the students and retaining them through our pipeline so that they can get the education they need to better their lives because at the end of the day, that's why we're here. We're here to help those students get the education they need to have that job and that career mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives. So it's been a big year, obviously, your first full year in this brand new position, mm -hmm. a new challenge that you hadn't had before. Um, a big year of transition for Idaho State University as well. Yeah. What do you do in your downtime to, to, you know, maybe shake off some of that stress or what do you enjoy <laughs> to do to clear your head? Well, one of the things that I love about living in Idaho and always have is Idaho's access to the outdoors. I and mean, we are so privileged to live in a state where you can uh, go to the outdoors and en enjoy and recreate and that's what I like to do. And it's fun to live in the eastern part of the state where I'm closer connected to some of the great things in um, Island Park and in Yellowstone and the Tetons and areas like that that are a great place to live. I also understand that you're a bit of an amateur historian. <laughs> amateur. Stress the amateur. Stress the amateur. Yeah. Do you focus more on like your family history or, or are there just parts of state history that you enjoy looking no, into? No, I love reading history and studying history. I think we learn so much from the past and, and history is a great way to put in context things that are happening now because ultimately a lot of the things that are going on now in any part of society are things we've experienced before. So understanding that history helps us as a guide for going forward. I appreciate your time so much and I, and I wish you the best going forward as well as you make your mark on the history of Idaho State University. Well, thank you very much, appreciate it. It's been a pleasure to meet you. It's good to meet you. Thank Thanks. you, President Satterley. Well, that is all of our time for this edition of Viewpoint. And uh, I will see you tomorrow on today's morning news. Thank you so much for watching. And then right back here next week for another edition of Viewpoint. Have a great day.